under the sea, under the sea. So first we're going to be learning about the phylum Echinodermata. The phylum Echinodermata are invertebrates. This phylum gets their name from the Greek. The name itself means spiny skin. So all members that belong to the Echinodermata phylum only live in marine habitats, but they can be found in all depths. They can actually be found in oceans all around the world, but they usually live along the seashore and in the reefs. But they can also live in the deep water. Echinoderms all have one thing in common. They all typically have a five radio symmetry. This means that these creatures have appendages that point outwards from the center of the body like the spokes of a bicycle wheel. Echinoderms have two major defining characteristics that set them apart from all other animals. They have a water vascular system and what we just spoke about, a five-sided radio symmetry. They are able to reproduce sexually and asexually. Most are produced by an external fertilization. Now let's talk about their digestive system. Echinoderms have a simple digestive system with a mouth, stomach, and intestine anus. In many, the mouth is on the underside and the anus on the top surface of the animal. Sea stars can push their stomach outside of their body and insert into its prey, which will allow them to digest the food externally. Chondrichthys, which include sharks, rays, and skates, have several defining characteristics. They have a cartilaginous skeleton instead of bones. This makes them lightweight and flexible. They have streamlined bodies with well-developed fins, allowing them to swim efficiently. Their skin is tough and covered in tooth-like scales. Many chondrichthians have multiple rows of teeth. Most species practice internal fertilization. But these are only some of the things that make up chondrichthys. They have tough and leathery skin covered with dermal denticles. These are rough, tooth-like scales that provide protection and reduce drag in the water. When it comes to reproduction, chondrichthys have various reproductive strategies, but most species practice internal fertilization. Males have claspers, which are specialized pelvic fins used to transfer sperm to females. Females usually give birth to live young, although some species do lay eggs. Water is necessary for chondrichthian reproduction as it serves as the medium for sperm transfer and egg fertilization. Chondrichthians can be found in various aquatic habitats worldwide. They inhabit oceans, seas, and even some freshwater environments. They occupy a wide range of niches from shallow coastal areas to deep sea habitats. Chondrichthians are carnivorous and have a diverse diet. Sharks, for example, are known for their predatory nature and feed on a variety of marine organisms including fish, seals, squid, and even other sharks. Rays and skates often feed on bottom-dwelling invertebrates such as crustaceans and mollusks using their specialized flat teeth to crush and to consume their prey. Chondrichthians respire through gills. They have gill slits on the sides of their bodies. Water enters through the mouth and flows over the gills, where oxygen is extracted and carbon dioxide is released. This process allows them to extract dissolved oxygen from the water and remove waste gases efficiently. While I can go on and on about the wonderful characteristics that make a chondrichthian a chondrichthian, I'd much rather tell you about some of the common examples that you might have even heard about. For instance, sharks like the great white shark, 
tiger shark and hammerhead shark. All belong to the class Chondrichthys. Rays such as manta rays, sting rays, and even electric rays are also part of this group. Skates like the common skate and thornback skate are other examples. These all represent just a few of the many species within the diverse class of chondrichthys. Did you know that osteichthys are similarly related to chondrichthys? Both of these vertebrate groups are aquatic fishes that belong to the class, well, Pisces. Respiration in both groups occurs in the gills and are both cold-blooded fishes, or poikilotherms. Did you know that osteichthys are similarly related to chondrichthys? Both of these vertebrate groups are aquatic fishes that belong to the class, well, Pisces. Respiration in both groups occurs in the gills and are both cold-blooded fishes, or poikilotherms which means that they regulate their internal body temperature throughout a wide range of temperatures, frequently in response to changes in the ambient temperature. But for now, we will focus on the osteichthys. They have a skeleton of bone, scales, paired fins, one pair of gill openings, jaws, and paired nostrils. They have bilateral symmetry, that means they only have one plane which divides into two identical halves and are ovipores. This means that the female lays eggs. Typically, the male and female reproductive organs are present in different organisms in this phylum. Water is absolutely necessary as the male releases the sperm into the water and the female releases her eggs into the water which get fertilized in the water. The process of reproduction is called spawning, and the frequency of reproduction is only once a year. They live in freshwater and ocean environments, including caves, deep sea habitats, and thermal springs and vents. Members of this class obtain food in several ways. Some are herbivores that nibble on aquatic plants, while others are carnivores that hunt small animals like smaller fish and worms. They also have a one-way digestive system. Osteichthys have a specialized breathing tube, cotton nasal pharyngeal duct, which leads to the gill pouches. Fishes like tropical reef clownfish, freshwater eels, swordfish, deep water angelfish, 